Um, hi, uh, I'm Sam Law. Um, I'm currently an organizer with Shellshock and the Finger Lakes Action Network. Um, last Saturday, the Finger Lakes, or, uh, the Finger Lakes uh, Action Network organized a rally at the Cuba Power Plant. Over 60 people attended to demand a permanent retirement of the coal-fired facility, oppose the repowering of the facility with toxic fracked gas, and advocate for a just transition to renewables for the town of Lansing. Fossil fuels and their related infrastructure no longer have a place on Puga Lake. Um, the Cuga power plant, as it is, has an incredibly toxic legacy. Out of the past 12 quarters, the plant has spent three quarters in open violation of the Clean Air Act and 10, 10 in violation of the Clean Water Act. According to the Clean Air Task Force, a nonprofit based in Boston, five deaths, nine heart attacks, and 78 asthma attacks a year in Tompkins County can be attributed to the coal plant. Luckily, for the health and safety of this community, uh, the plant is no longer profitable, and it is being mothballed, which means shut down. However, the upstate New York power producers, at the behest of the Department of Public Service, um, have proposed to replace the small amount of energy produced at the plant with a costly conversion to run the plant on fracked gas. Such a project would be funded by rate hikes, disproportionately impacting low-income people, and would increase the presence of industrial fracking-related infrastructure in Tompkins County, including an 18-mile pipeline. Furthermore, the economic viability of this plant would depend on the low price of gas, something that relies on the continued poisoning of the land, air, and water of our neighbors in Pennsylvania by the very same fracking industry which is threatening to make incursions into New York. Also, the plant would increase demand for natural gas, making fracking more likely to happen in New York State itself. I understand that the power plant is a significant tax base in Tompkins County, and I believe that we are being offered a false choice between the loss of this revenue and a project that would damage our community health. In these informational packets, which I'm giving you, I also sent an email out to all of you, uh, or to someone to send it to you. Uh, uh, in these informational packets, I, uh, we include not only a detailed history of the plant and cases against coal and fracked gas, but also information on viable alternatives that would provide a just transition off of fossil fuels for the town of Lansing. We believe that alternatives should be thoroughly considered and that Tompkins County should take a lead in exploring energy options of the future rather than the toxic and deadly options of the past. Um, and also in, these, uh, in this informational packet are quotes from Sandra Steingraber, from Mark Jacobson, uh, from a series of other uh, influential people opposing the repowering. So I would encourage you all to look through it, through them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hillary Lambert, and any, whoever else in the room who's speaking should make a way to use the microphone. Hi there. Uh, I'm Dr. Hillary Lambert. I'm the steward or executive director of the Cayuga Lake Watershed Network, a nonprofit that was created in the 1990s to educate about, gather research about, and advocate on behalf of the continued good health of Cayuga Lake and its beautiful creeks. That's what the watershed is. And I'm here to give you a preliminary statement concerning Cayuga Power Plant slash AES Cayuga on behalf of the Cayuga Lake Watershed Network and Cayuga Lake. In Kentucky, I'm from here, I live in Dryden. I lived and worked in Kentucky for a long time working for a watershed protection nonprofit and dealing with a lot of coal and energy related issues there. So in Kentucky, where I lived for many years, many towns are beholden to coal companies for jobs and school funding and in return must live with environmental destruction and economic stagnation. We do not want fossil fuel funding dependency to dictate our future here in Tompkins County. The Cuba Lake Watershed Network's 2012 position statement on gas drilling and fracking states in part that shale gas dependency and development would forestall the growth of the renewable energy sector that offers to bolster our economic vitality and curtail greenhouse gas emissions. We support an energy policy that promotes conservation and renewable energy sources. Now, protecting our clean water resources is part of that policy. And a worrisome legacy at the AES slash Cayuga site is their coal waste landfill. A recent report by Earth Justice 
looking at well-documented um, data sources based on water monitoring wells at the site found, quote, contaminated leachate and runoff from an on-site coal combustion waste landfill uh, discharged directly from a pond into Cayuga Lake. The contaminated discharge contained grossly elevated levels of arsenic, cadmium, and selenium. In addition, a partially unlined landfill contaminated groundwater and residential wells with elevated levels of lead, close quote. So, in conclusion, for the time being, prior to any decisions that are made about the future uses and ownership of the AES Cayuga property, I really think that this problem must be fully investigated, assessed, and mitigated so that it does not further impact Cayuga Lake. And I'll leave a copy of this statement here providing the sources that I used for this brief statement. Thank you. Thank you, Miller. Uh, is there anyone else who'd like to address the Hi. Um, my name is Barbara Coyle. I'm a new resident of Tompkins County. Um, recently moved, I live in the town of Ithaca. And I recently moved here from Bradford County, Pennsylvania, and I think you can know why. Um, I moved here because of the toxic time bomb that the natural gas industry was bringing to our community. I had lived there for 40 years, had my children there, raised my garden there. Um, it was very difficult to make this move, and I moved here because Tompkins County has been very smart so far around these issues. And I'm just here to add my voice and my name and my family of four's name to this issue and to say it is not a smart move to transition from coal to natural gas. That's a mistake. The time for renewables is now, and Tompkins County is smart enough to do that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, I'm out. Hi, Jones Hola Dennis Dryden. I, I didn't fill out one of your tickets, but thank you. It's a privilege to speak. Uh, I just wanted to let you know I'm in opposition of any conversion to natural gas. I've worked for five years nearly uh, tirelessly to uh, bring awareness to Dryden to get a ban there uh, successfully, and then we had to sue uh, the industry to, to keep our local rights. So converting that to gas uh, is a gateway project, which means we now need storage, and we now need to frack gas to support that conversion. I'm not going to be supporting anyone who supports that project. These are obsolete fuels. We know that. I'm part of the Dryden Resource Awareness Coalition, who has uh, worked tirelessly to bring uh, Solaris Tompkins SE to fruition. That's a great project going on right now, uh, creating a lot of jobs. Solar Liberty was one of our participants, as was Renewables Energy. We know how to do things better here. That is a gateway project that we cannot afford. To accept another fossil fuel would be saddling the future with a debt that we cannot pay with environmental degradation. I live not far from that plant, and I'm going to tell you right now that I wanted to finish my house and develop that acreage that we have with self-powering homes. However, if that project goes through, it will be a matter of time before fracturing happens and we will be leaving Tompkins County, just like this woman has left Pennsylvania. So, welcome to Tompkins County, because we're not going to be doing this here. Going, we are not going to be doing this here. This legislature is not going to allow that, because we are smarter than this. We are leaders in this community. We do not follow the industry. We make them do what we want, because this is where we live. And I would like to live here, and so would you. And this project is dependent on that. Please don't allow this to happen. We can do other things. We already have the answers. If we do not listen to the greatest minds at Cornell University, who are you going to listen to? Your vote will determine. There's some integrity that's going to happen in this room soon. Please don't disappoint me. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Welcome to Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
initiative. I am Judy Pierpont, also a member of Dryden Resource Awareness Coalition. And I would also like to encourage the Tompkins County Legislature to resolve not to support the repowering of the Cayuga Operating Company with natural frack natural gas. Um, first, it's not necessary in providing um, the needed power to our area. NYSEG itself has um, determined that the problems are limited to peak hours, and those peak hours actually more in Auburn than in this area. Um, they said that it can, the problems can be solved um, through grid upgrades, at least the short-term problem. Um, and it seems to me that if there is a short-term problem and we're headed for large-scale renewable generation, that if we can find a short-term solution that will allow us to move in that direction, um, that if we're only offered a certain number of um, alternatives in this window with the PFC, that we should make sure that um, we take the option that allows us to move in the direction of renewables rather than committing ourselves to 30 to 40 years of expensive fracked gas, burning fossil fuels, putting through pipelines, and encouraging um, a culture and a, an environment of pipelines and also condemning Seneca Lake to gas storage on its shores. Um, so taking this solution for the short term would provide time and motivation to move to generation with renewables. Um, so just upgrading would not tie this area to burning frack gas for 30 to 40 years, and it would be much less expensive. Right now, NYSEG charges its customers $30 million extra it, to keep the generation going at Cayuga Operating Company. So that's like a tax um, to keep it going. And so if we're talking about taxes coming to the county or to Lansing, um, we're already paying $30, to $30 million extra as a community for um, keeping those, com you know, keeping those, those companies companies going. So mothballing them, we would not have that $30 million extra rate on top of us. And if we, rate payers will also be, um, expect will be the ones who are paying for the transition to burning gas. So that's more um, electricity expense on our backs for having a private company transition to a profit-making operation. We get to pay for the transition. And we don't know that it's ever going to pay off, because gas prices right now are at the floor. And they're going to go up, undoubtedly, as soon as there's more gas usage, which we would be contributing to. And as soon as they start exporting it, they want it to be global, you know, tied to a global price. And as part of the pipelines that are coming through are to get it to the shores where it can be exported as liquefied natural gas, and our rates will go way, way up. So there's no point in converting to a dead fossil fuel. Thank you, Judy. Anyone else? 